This video will show you how to draw demand and supply diagrams. As so many students often find it challenging and a little confusing. But with practice and the tips I'll give you, you'll be able to maximise marks and show the examiners what they're looking for. Feel free to revisit this video anytime you need to as well. Do ensure you've watched the factors affecting demand and the factors affecting supply videos so you have a good understanding of why shifts occur on these diagrams. This video will also have practice questions. So grab your pen and a ruler and let's practice drawing the diagrams. You can pause the video as we go along if needed. You may have learnt to draw the demand curve like this, which is correct. It is not wrong. However, I've seen as an examiner, when students are asked to draw a demand and supply diagram, this is all they might draw, which is incomplete. And so they get zero marks, which is not what you want. So to avoid that, I'll show you how to get full marks when you need to draw a demand and supply diagram. The first step is to draw the axes. You should label the vertical axes as price and the horizontal axes as quantity. The demand curve is a downward sloping line and we'll label it as D. We'll label it as D1 later when we've made a shift. And then we draw the supply curve which is an upward sloping line and label it as S or S1. So let's continue to label our diagram. We now need to include the equilibria. So that starts on the equilibrium in the very centre where supply meets demand and then we label that part of the equilibria as P1 and we continue. And we label that as Q1. So it should be, as you can see it like that, it shouldn't be straight lines when you're drawing the equilibria. Now, if you have a four mark question and if you just draw this and label it fully, even if you get the shifts wrong, you will get two marks. I often tell my students to just start off with the X. So drawing the letter X straight after you have drawn the axes, then draw the letter X and fully label it and you're good to go. So remember, start off with the X. A little reminder for you. Now this part of the video will focus on demand and shifts in demand, whether there's an increase in demand or a decrease in demand. Now you could be asked in an exam question to construct a supply and demand diagram and within the case study you will need to ascertain whether there's going to be an increase in demand or a decrease in demand. Now if you're not sure about the factors that affect demand do check out this video. I will put the link to it in the description box. Let's take a look at what a shift on the demand curve would look like. We'll look at an increase in demand and a decrease in demand. First of all, we will look at an increase in demand. So we started off with the X and we fully labeled the axes and we've labeled the demand curve and the supply curve and we've drawn our equilibria. Now we're going to show a increase in demand. So we need to draw a new demand curve. There's our new demand curve, but we need to label it. So we'll label it as D2. Now we need a new equilibria. So we're drawing the equilibria and then we will label that as Q2. And we will continue to draw equilibria and label this as P2. So now we have shown an increase in demand. Hope you've got that down. Hope you've seen that was super straightforward. Just a reminder to please like share and subscribe as I do post regularly. Now let's show a decrease in demand. So to draw a demand and supply diagram to reflect a decrease in demand, we start off again by drawing our axes, label them price and quantity. Then we have the demand curve and we label that as D. 
and we have our supply curve and we label that with a S. So far so good. So now we need to draw our equilibria so we will do that quickly. Label it P1 and then label it Q1. So that gives us two marks if it was a four mark question and that's what I mean by starting off with an X. Fully labeling that, making sure that we have gained some marks even if our shift goes incorrectly. So now we're going to put our shift in and it's a decrease in demand. You might have noticed that our D has changed from D to D1 and that's because we're making a shift. So sometimes it might be D and then your new shift might be D2 or you might change the D to D1 to D2 as long as you show that there's a difference from your original demand curve to the new one. They both can't be labelled as D, for example. There's got to be a difference. So I'm labelling this one as D1 and the new curve I'm going to label as D2. So let's bring in our new curve. We're showing a decrease in demand. D2. And including our equilibria. And we'll put Q2 down and we will continue. Can you guess? Yes, that's P2. So that would give you four marks out of a four mark question if you're asked to draw a demand and supply diagram and reflect a decrease in demand. It's as simple as that. Fully label your diagrams. Wasn't that straightforward? So just to show you an increase in demand, fully labelled diagram there, and a decrease in demand, another fully labelled diagram. Let's try a practice question. Draw a demand and supply diagram to reflect the demand for sunglasses in the winter. Do check out this demand and supply cheat sheet to use for your revision. This document includes all the factors affecting demand and all the factors affecting supply with questions and the fully labelled demand and supply diagrams as answers. I'll put the link to it in the description box. Okay, so back to this question. So give it some thought and we'll talk through it. I'd like for you to consider what would happen to the demand for sunglasses in the winter. The diagram helps us to predict what will happen in the market when there is a change. So we need to consider the change and the change here is that it's no longer summer, it is winter. It's a change in seasons. So what would happen is demand for sunglasses in the winter would fall. So you can attempt this question now. Remember to start off with an X and then show a decrease in demand. You can pause the video and attempt the question now. All right, so here is the answer. A decrease in demand would look like this. Did you get it right? Now on to shifts on the supply curve. Again, we start with the X. So this is what our X would look like as we know. But for this part of the video, we're now focusing on the supply curve. Almost there. We'll start off by looking at an increase in supply. So we're only making changes to the supply curve here. Bring in a new supply curve and we will label it as S2. We can't have it being called S1, S2. And now we need to include our equilibria. So we do that and we will label it P2. So that's price level two, P2. And continue with our equilibria and label it Q2, quantity two. And that's it, increase in supply. So that's straightforward. So if there's a decrease in supply and we're asked to draw a diagram, we would start off with the X. We do that with any demand and supply diagram. We start off with an X, it makes it so much simpler and you will still get marks for it. So start off with an X and we're focusing on the supply curve. 
So we bring in our new supply curve and we label it as S2. Draw our equilibria. P2. And that is Q2. And that is a decrease in supply. Now you should have drawn a decrease in supply. Before we look at our practice question, let's just look at the two diagrams side by side. So increase in supply looks just as follows. And a decrease in supply looks like that. On to our practice question. Construct a demand and supply diagram to show a government subsidy being used to support the construction industry. We now need to think, is this a factor that would affect demand? So the demand curve would change or a factor affecting supply. If you're not sure about the factors, then do check out these videos. You need to know the factors. Remember to start off with the X. This question gives mention to a subsidy in the construction industry. In this instance, for this question, the impact would be on supply. But you now need to consider where the supply would increase or decrease. So if a subsidy is being given to the construction industry, there would be an increase in supply. You can pause the video and attempt to draw the diagram. And here is the answer.